Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be doing a play example from the game Position Magnifique, The Battle of Mars Latour 1870. This is a game designed by Herman Lutman, originally published as Duel of Eagles. This is the uh, issue number 81 of Paper Wars from Compass Games version of it. So pretty much the same game, just uh, you know, slightly different branding, different name, of course. And uh, the component quality is a little different, I would suppose, as well. I've not played Duel of Eagles, so I don't know that for sure. But this is a magazine game, but uh, it's actually done very well. And the components are fine. Nothing, nothing to complain about there. So I'm going to do the play example rather than doing a playthrough, because I feel like it'll be shorter and it will provide us with um, basically, you know, the, the, the mechanics of the game as laid out by the designer so that, um, you know, if anybody knows how to play the game, it would be, uh, it would be him. So we are going to, uh, to do that and I'm going to get that underway right now. Okay. So here's the situation. All right. Uh, it's just a small corner of the map here. The French are desperately trying to hold on to Flavigny, which is here underneath this guy right there. And, um, the Prussian is, doing a counteroffensive, basically. So these are the Prussians down here. These are the French. So basically our Prussians down here are trying to get up here and take the town. So we have two players. Obviously it is a two player game. So the French possess a, a chit called the beaten zone. This is an event chit. Focus, there it goes. All right. So beaten zone event chit. Um, yeah. That's helpful. Anyway, so I'll go into what the um, what the what they mean, but but he's holding that, okay? Because when you draw chits out of the cup, you can hold them. Uh, you can optionally hold them. Some of them you have to play immediately. Some of them you can hold. So that is one that the that the player can hold. Now the uh, the Prussian has one called battlefield condition that he is holding. So both sides have one chit in hand, one event chit. We're going to say that the uh, the Prussian player is actually pulling the chits right now. And he's going to pull one that says for me. There we go. All right. Mitraeus fire. So that is basically like an early machine gun, right? And that is a powerful, uh, Powerful chit for the for the French player, but it can only be used with an artillery unit that has the letter M on it, which this one does right here. So that is the Second Corps Divisional Field Artillery, and it's actually on its reduced side, but it does have the M, which means it is equipped with that particular weapon. So they're going to uh, the French will use that. And they will fire at the 953 infantry right here, which is also reduced. So you can see the full strength ones are a solid color, like this and this, and the reduced of the stripe of a lighter color there and there. So that's an easy way to tell who's full strength and who's reduced. Uh, you can also kind of tell by the by the redu reduction in their uh, their firepower too, as well. So what we're going to do here is, so this guy is going to fire at that. Now, because it's an event chit, right? So we have here, and this is a printout of something from the rule book. So it says, um, mitrailleuse fire. The French player may immediately conduct fire combat with any one mitrailleuse equipped artillery unit. And as I mentioned, designated with an M on the counter on any eligible target within a three hex range. Sorry, it's hard to get this whole thing in the shot. Uh, this fire is always at effective range. Resolve the fire normally starting with the six combat factor col column if the unit's on its full strength side or with the three if it's on its reduced strength side. Regardless of the actual combat factor of the artillery unit, adjust normally for all other conditions. If an MT result is achieved, reduce the morale rating of the targeted unit by minus one. We know that they are three hexes apart. They are actually... On the same level, the ter terrain, the colors on the terrain, basically the darker the color, the higher the terrain is. Like this here is level five. 
And then this is level uh, three. This is level four down. Well, let, let's see, where is it? A there is no level four visible in this shot. Uh, actually there is, it's over here. So this is four, this is three, this is two, and this light color is one. Based on that, we're gonna issue fire at the Prussian 953 infantry unit directly to the battery's front since it's within three hexes and eligible to be fired at. The fire will be resolved using the three column of the fire combat table. So the line of sight is clear as both the firing unit and the target are at level three and the intervening terrain in either is either at the same height or has no blocking obstacles or is level two and low or and therefore lower. Okay, so that is true. There are no applicable column shifts, so we're going to use the, the three column of the fire combat table. And this is our fire combat table. So we're lo looking at column three, which is right here. Okay, so basically he needs to, um, to roll like an eight or better. So he's going to roll his two dice, and I'll just roll this off, off board here. And he rolls an eight. And as I just showed you, the 8 has an MT result, which is a morale test. So a morale test means the targeted unit must immediately roll two dice, add them together, and consult the morale test table. And I will do that right now. And again, we're going for the play example, so I, knew, I know what the result is going to be. And so they roll a 5. They roll a 5. And if we look at the morale test table... Okay, it is a, here's our morale test table. He is a Prussian infantry at reduced strength, which is a seven. So that means that he, um, he passes. Even though it gets reduced by one to a six, it's still below that, so it is good to go. So the, the mitrailleuse event shit is put, pushed to the side. It's used, that means it doesn't go back into the cup until next turn. And we draw another chit. So this time the chit that's pulled is the activation of the Prussian 6th Cavalry. There we go. Prussian 6th Cavalry. All right. So that means that all the purple units will be activated, of which there's really only one in the shot. Now, we're assuming that this is just a small portion of the battlefield and there are more units off shot. Okay, including the headquarters unit of the 6th Cavalry. So the 6th Cavalry headquarters uh, unit is placed on its attack side. Okay, so this is your 6th Cavalry headquarters unit right here. That is out of its command range. The command range is the 2. So he is far afield here, way out of range. So he, he, once you're out of range, then you have to basically roll for out the, on the out of command table. Okay, so our out of command table is here. And this tells you what to do based on the die roll that you get. So we're going we're gonna to roll again. Again, two dice. You roll two dice for most things. And we get a six. And that means its movement allowance is reduced to four because it's uh, half rounded up and his movement rating is a seven. So half rounded up is four. The brigade on our map is, is marked as being out of, out of command, like so. So he's out of command. A roll on the out of command table yields a six. This means the movement is reduced to four, but because of the attack order, it may still charge an assault. Wilhelm would love to charge the French artillery ba battery, which is here. But doing so would subject the cavalry to defensive fire from the French infantry units on either side of the battery. This guy and this guy. Um regardless of which side he charged from. And it cannot charge the infantry in Flavigny here because it would have to cross a stream and it would also be charging into a town hex, which is not legal. So Wilhelm, our Ger uh, German or Prussian leader, decides to have the cavalry charge the French Imperial Guard infantry unit to see if he can open up the flank a bit. So that would be this guy right here. Okay, so he announces a cavalry charge, 
And let me just remove this for, for the moment. So he declares a cavalry charge. He's charging here. So he goes here. And at this point, Pierre, our French leader, has the beaten zone chit, event chit that he could play, which allows him to do interdiction. However, he's going to elect to hold it. So the, the cavalry will continue on into this hex. Now, once he's adjacent, this guy can do defensive fire. So our um, French infantry unit here can do defensive fire. But before they do that, the German commander, the Prussian commander, grabs his battlefield conditions chit. And he's going to place it on here and say that he's going to use the battlefield smoke event. And therefore, Pierre must apply a two column to the left shift to his unit's defensive fire. The range is one hex, which is effective range. And the French unit has a combat value of five. Pierre grabs his dice and he rolls in the three column because of that two column shift. And he actually rolls a four, surprisingly, which is a terrible roll. And we look at our combat table. And in three, now he's a five, but he gets reduced to three because of the battlefield smoke, and a four gives you nothing. So that's just a uh, big old nothing burger there for uh, poor old Pierre. So not only does he do no damage, but they would also get, actually this was supposed to be a two and a two. So when you roll doubles, you get a low ammo marker. So he would put a low ammo marker on there as well. So now the cavalry moves in into the same hex for the charge. Now, because he moved, once he's in this hex, no, no one else could fire at him, even if we did have an adjacent, like if this unit here was adjacent, they can do defensive fire, but they can't because he's in the same hex with a uh, friendly unit. Okay, so that's the end of the movement phase, and he goes to the assault combat phase. Okay, so basically the, the sequence of play... You draw your chit, you do fire combat, then you do the headquarter command phase. So this is what we did, right? When we when we drew our 6th Cavalry Division chit, which was the first thing, we drew the chit. Then the activated unit, in this case our cavalry here, did, elected to not do fire combat from range. They, they checked for command and found that they were out of command. Then they went to the movement phase. And now they're in the assault combat phase. And so after this, we would do a rally phase once all the activations are done, which obviously is not the case right now. The assaulting cavalry, we have to figure out the combat differential. So the assaulting cavalry has successfully charged, so its combat factor of two, right there, is doubled to four because they've successfully charged. They got to the, they got to the target without without being um, stopped, basically, by uh, enemy fire. The defending French infantry has a combat factor of 5, which we know from before. So the combat differential is minus 1, 4 minus 5, right? That's a minus 1. So Wilhelm is going to roll his dice on the minus 1 column, which means you really need to roll well. And guess what? He's going to roll... He rolls... Oops... Almost knocked my tower over. He rolls an 11, a 6, and a 5. A 6 and a 5. <laughs> Sorry, that was out of the shot. So that's an 11, and that results here on our... Um, oops, that's the wrong table. Our assault combat table, which is a little different. So here's our assault combat. He's a minus 1. He rolled an 11, which is a D2. So that's a great roll. Because a D2 means the defender loses the combat and you apply the result to the defending unit only. Okay, so a D2, he must for, he, he has to retreat. Okay, so he has to treat, retreat at least, because it's a cavalry charge, he has to retreat at least one hex. So the choices are retreat two hexes or take one step loss and retreat just one hex. So he's going to retreat two hexes back to the um, second corps headquarters here, back in this hex. So he keeps his out of his low ammo marker, and he stays there. 
and he's out of command, as we know. And he also gets a shaken marker as well. So now the Prussian cavalry can conduct a breakthrough movement and moves one hex towards the unit he just beat. So he's now adjacent to the um, artillery. And so now he also gets a shaken marker because he conducted a cavalry charge. And that's going to end the 6th Cavalry Division's activation. Okay, so now we draw another chit. And we get the Krupp Guns Colonel Caprivi event. So here's that, right? We have Krupp on one side. We have Colonel Caprivi on the other side. So that gives him a, a second event. Actually, a, a first event again because he spent his battlefield condition. So that one gets tossed to the side and not returned to the cup until we start a new turn. So as much as the German player, the Prussian player, is tempted to use the Colonel Caprivi side, it's chancy because you need to roll a 1 to 4 to get it to work. So instead, he's going to take a sure thing and elect to use the Krupp's guns chit for an immediate free fire by one of his batteries. So he's going to place the Krupp gun chit aside next to the battlefield condition chit he just used prior to this. Now, looking at his artillery, he's got, he's got two. He's got his core field guns here and his divisional heavy field guns as well. The problem for our Prussian commander here is this infantry unit is sitting in front of this battery, and they're on the same level. So he blocks his fire towards the French line, which means that the only artillery unit he could use would be the core field gun here, because, as you can see, this one has a higher firepower than that one does. So, because it's on a, it's also on a level 5, it can fire over this unit at these guys. Okay? Otherwise, it would only be able to fire straight ahead or in this direction because there's nothing blocking. But it's on level 5, so he sees over this unit and can see Flavigny and the French units. He can fire at any of these units here. Because they are within range. So he's going to elect to, to attack this unit right here. The one that's in town. And hoping that he can loosen them up for an attack. So the range is four hexes. One, two, wait. One, two, three, four. Right? Four hexes. And therefore, just within its effective range, which is four. And its extended range is a seven, as you can see there on the chit. So it's four, uh, range of four, okay? It will fire with its nine combat factor and will have the following column shifts. One to the right for plunging fire because he's shooting from higher to lower, from level five to level two, but also a two shift to the left because the target's in a town. So that's a net minus one shift. So the combat's going to be resolved on the eight column. Okay, so this is, the, this is again, our fire combat table. Here's the eight column. So this is a pretty effective column to be in. There's lots of stuff in there that can be uh, good for the, uh, the attacking player. So he's going to roll his dice, and he rolls an eight. And he rolls an eight, okay? And an eight means that it's an SH result. So an SH result is a shaken result. So if it had already had a shaken marker, a second shaken would be a reduction, but it does not have a shaken marker. So he gets a shaken marker and it says to put him under the unit. So let's do that. Um, I haven't been doing that, but these should kind of go underneath. All right. So the next chit that's pulled is the French beaten zone bloody struggle chit, which is this guy right here. Okay, so we got beaten zone, and on the other side, bloody struggle. A good buddy Pierre, he's already got a uh, a beaten <laughs> beaten zone, so he's going to hold the bloody struggle side because he's going figuring that eventually the Prussians are going to hit Flavigny with an assault, and he's going to need need that uh, event, that bloody zone event. Since he elects to hold it, we, there's nothing else that goes on. We draw the next chit. The next chit is the Prussian Third Corps. So now the Prussian Third Corps has been activated. And that's all these guys right here. 
First thing is the first thing obviously after that is your fire combat. So he can fire his units regardless of orders or command status. Unfortunately for the Prussians both of the infantry units are out of range of any French units because their extended range is only two hexes. And look, one, two, three. One, two, three. This guy's three as well. And three. They're all, well, also the artillery, they're all three hexes away. Okay, so his only shot is a repeat of what he just did with our core field gun here. He's going to fire on Flavigny again and use the same eight column. And this time he's going to roll a five, which in the eight column of five is a morale test. Okay, so now this guy has to take a morale test and he's already shaken. So Pierre's going to grab his dice and he rolls a 10, which is a morale failure. So the, the unit must now reply, apply in a shaken result. But since it's already shaken, that becomes a step reduction. So they get flipped over to their reduced side. Okay, so now we place an artillery fired marker on our core field guns here. Um, the core headquarters stays on its attack side. I didn't mention this, but they have an attack side and a de de deploy or defend side. So he stayed on his attack side because he did attack with the artillery there. Okay, so now all, th all of the three core units are within command range of General Alvinsleben. So they can operate normally this turn. So now we go to the movement phase and Wilhelm can move his three core units as follows. The 953 infantry here is going to move to 1515, which is right here. So he's going to move there. And then he's going to move to 1415, which is here. And then he's going to move his heavy field artillery to 16. 17 which is here and then 16 16 and the 10 5 3 infantry is going to go to 15 15 so right there and then 14 15 no nope, 15 14 would be his next move but at this point our french player is going to yell hold it and he's going to use his event chat for the beaten zone that he held prior to issue interdiction fire from our infantry unit here. The way this works, the range, he, you have to do it when the range is at least two. So he couldn't wait for him to get here. He has to do it while he's still at range. Okay. And this kind of reflects the fact that the French had the, um, the gun whose name I'm drawing a blank on right now, but they had better rifles. The Chasson maybe was the name of it. I forget. But anyway, they had very, very good rifles, okay? And um, they were more effective at range. And you can see here, his range is two and three extended. The Prussians, by contrast, are one and two. So that's the, the benefit of the better guns, the better rifles that the French possessed in this war. Okay, so he's going to interdict at a range of two hexes. So fire combat is resolved immediately with the French unit has a one combat factor because he's reduced and it's a two halved to one because he's shaken. So you see he's a two, but it gets halved because he's shaken. So it becomes a one and he's within effective range. So there are no column shifts. So he's going to roll his dice on the one column, which isn't a real good column to be rolling on. And he rolls a seven, which is no effect. So then we... We now have expended our beaten zone chit for the for the French, and we go on to the next thing. Wil Wilhelm can continue his movement and move this guy up adjacent, like so. Okay, so now again, the French 112 unit can immediately issue defensive fire. So now that they're adjacent, he can fire at him again. So we're going to get the same exact thing. So it's again going to be on the one column, but this time Pierre rolls a 10, which gives the Prussian a shaken marker. We get a shaken marker for our Prussian unit here. I, drew, I picked up two somehow. All right, so he is now shaken. 
Okay, so that'll end the movement phase and uh, our Prussian can now begin the assault phase by announcing that the 953 infantry here is going to assault the cavalry. But the French leader is going to decide that despite the Prussians being penalized for, for fight, attacking across a stream, that uh, discretion is the better part of valor and he's going to retreat before combat. So he's going to take the automatic D1 result and retreat the cavalry back to 1413. So he's going to back up to here. So we will now use um, breakthrough to advance to that, that hex there. Now you might say, well, why can't this guy do a defensive fire? Because this was a breakthrough move and you can't do defensive fire on a breakthrough move. So now we're going to do an assault on the town of Slovigny with this unit right here. So the attacking Prussian has a combat factor of five. So it's a nine halved rounded up becomes a five. Um, it's halved because he's shaken. So remember that. Okay. The defending French unit we know has a combat factor of one because he is reduced and shaken. So that is a differential of plus four, but there is a two Column shift to the left for attacking across a stream hex side and another two for attacking infantry in a town hex. So that's going to actually be a four column shift. So what looked like a great one goes one, two, three, four and goes to the minus one column. So anything under an eight results in a bad, something bad for the uh, Prussians, but he rolls a nine and the nine is a D1 result and D1 means that the French have to retreat or take a step loss. So um, because they're already reduced, that's going to really prevent the French from taking the step loss because you would eliminate your unit. If he was full strength, he could have opted to take the step loss and stayed in the hex. But because he's not, he has to retreat. So he moves back one hex. So right now this would have a French flag on it to indicate that the French control the town. However, things are not looking good for the French player at the moment. Um, it does seem like the uh, the Prussians are going to capture Fl Flavigny here. Um, so the end result is that the French are pushed out of the town, but the Prussians are too hurt to pursue. So Flavigny is still technically controlled by the French, and that's why we put the French control marker there to remind them that it is occupied by a friend by the French or until it well the last occupying force was the French that's what I meant to say <laughs> um, so what will happen next turn so that's that's the completion of the play example so hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of how the game works um, it's not overly complicated 14 pages of rules uh, the text isn't overly large, so the rule there is a decent amount of rules here. Um, but, you know, the play example takes up two pages. Terms, developer notes, or designer notes, rather. I keep saying developer. That's the computer programmer in me, I think, in terms of development, not des design. <laughs> but anyway, Herm is the designer. And the designer notes also take up almost two pages. So you can knock that down to about nine pages of rules. So... Uh, obviously not an overly complicated game. This is the first game of the uh, Blind Swords, what became known as the Blind Sword system, which is still going strong. Um, as I mentioned in my first look video on this game, Revolution is actually releasing uh, Grand Havoc, which is the eighth of the Blind Sword games to be released by them. That's kind of where the series really initially took off. As this was the first game, essentially, but um, once it moved into the Civil War with Stonewall Sword, which was the next game, that uh, that was done. It was mostly done on re by Revolution. Uh, GMT did, at any cost, Mets, which is also Franco-Prussian War. That is a game that I am trying to get my hands on, but I have not been able to do so yet. Um, it is out of print. It is not on the P500 list, unfortunately. Even if it was, it could take years to get through that process. But I have not been able to find it on, you know, eBay, etc. Or, uh, you know, Consim Marketplace or Noble Knight or any of the usual places I go to to try to find games that are 
no longer in print. So that is the end of this video. Um, depending on how it does, I may or may not do an actual uh, playthrough video or videos on this game. Um, I am going to continue to play the game because I like the system. I'm trying to get familiar with it, and this is probably the easiest one, in my opinion. Um, the activations change a little bit in Stonewall Sword, which is the next game up. I will probably do something on Stonewall Sword, even though that game has been heavily covered by content creators, only because I, you know, I'm going to play it, so why not play it for video? And if anybody finds it worthwhile to check it out, that, you know, that's, that's all good. So um, that's kind of what I do here with my channel. I do want to put things out there that people want to see, but I also want to do things that I'm doing that I enjoy playing or whatever. So that's why sometimes it might seem like I'm all over the place. You know, I recently did British Way. I did uh, Twilight Struggle Red Sea on the computer. I've done uh, some lock and load tactical digital. I'm in kind of a lock and load uh, rut, maybe you might want to say. I'm going to be doing stuff with Nations at War, um, possibly Point Blank. I have both of those games. I have uh, the JU87 Stuka game coming. I have the World at War 85, uh, Blood and Fury, plus Storming the Gap coming. So lots of lock and load stuff. The only thing I really don't kind of have in any way, shape, or form is probably Space Infantry. And some of their non-series games I don't have as well. Although I do have Tank. Tank on Tank. I think that's what it's called. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm starting to digress and ramble, so I'm going to wrap it up. I do appreciate you guys watching um, and appreciate you taking the time to check this out. Hope you get something out of it. But that is going to do it. My name is Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. And until next time, happy gaming.